Hi everyone, here's the Bookemist once again, and this is something new that might develop in some kind of mini series here on this channel, so stick with me for a minute. Those of you who know my videos know that I am mostly into contemporary literature, especially American. I like postmodern literature a lot, I like speculative fiction a lot, I love when the two things mix and intertwine together. This does not mean that I don't have a pension for classics, actually, and some of my favorite books of all times are classics, especially European classics, from centuries ago. Now, reading is a cumbersome passion in many ways. Unlike with music or video games or even movies, when you get into books, when you start getting into literature, you know that the field is so vast you will, like, never be able to call yourself really an expert on everything, on every area of literature. There are so many genres, so many eras in literary history, so many nations, and each of these features a plethora of works, of fantastic works that deserve to be read. Now, although I do know some people who are literally walking encyclopedia of literature, who know everything on so many different eras and genres and national literatures, it's really impossible to know all the classics in literary history, all the important works from all different fields, and that's completely fine. Yet there are some books that are just so motherfuckingly good that it's really, it's a crime to ignore them and not to read them if you are a passionate reader in general, whether you're studying literature, whether you just read because you like it, whether you're into Regency romance or into contemporary science fiction. These books, you have to read them. And this is kind of the purpose of this mini-series sort of things, of these videos, really. I'd like to talk about those important classics, which I personally like so much, I would suggest to really, really everybody. Am I a big authority in the field? Not at all. I'm not going to talk about the books I find the most influential or important, mostly because I'm not competent enough to tell you about that. I'm going to talk about books I personally love. Am I a big authority in the field? Not at all. And I still have to read lots and lots of classics. I have never read Moby Dick, for instance. I have never read, I don't know, uh, The Cameron from Italian literature. I have never read most of the huge uh, Russian novels from the 19th century. Still, these are my favorite ones, my favorite classics from many different eras. And here comes another disclaimer. The hardcore literary classicists among you will notice that this serious thing on classics feature absolutely no classics in the strictest European sense. It's going to start with Dante Alighieri and the classics from like my perspective having studied some kind of like old school literary canon the classics are like the Greeks and the Latins. The point is that I have read very few of those I didn't love them especially much mostly because I don't have the competence to read them critically and to understand what they are saying to me as a human being so this series on the classics will really start on with modern literature. Interestingly enough modern literature starts like eight centuries ago or something like that. So let's begin and the book I'm going to begin with is what is clearly the best book of all times, period, let's end the video here. The Divine Comedy is an epic poem from the early 14th century uh, detailing the journey of Dante Alighieri, the narrative persona of the actual author, traveling through the three dimensions of the Catholic afterlife, hell, purgatory and paradise. Why does he do that? Why does he like take this journey? What's in it for him? Let's find out together by reading the very first few lines, which go something like Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la diritta via era smarrita. Ai quant'è dire cosa dura esta selva selvaggia e aspra e forte che nel pensier rinnova la paura. Dante amara che poco è più morte. Ma per parlare del ben chi vi trovai, dirò delle altre cose chi vi scorte. I fucked up line 4, but whatever. Now, I'm not going to give you a translation of this, because this is untranslatable, meaning that the musicality of it, the, like, the poetry element of this book, is lost on you if you're not Italian. Let, let's face it, that's a sad truth. You will never understand it the way I do. Ha ha ha. Still, uh, the, the book doesn't hinder, luckily for you. I mean, I mean, if you really want to understand that, like, take a degree in Italian. Anyway, the beauty of these lines isn't 
necessarily in the musicality of it, though there's lots there too, it's in the actual meaning. And I'm going to talk about it, I'm not going to give you any translation. Like, I think Alexander Pope translated it like five centuries ago, I'm sure you'll find even more accessible translation out there, I'll put some links in the description box. What is Dante telling you in these first few lines? He is telling you that toward the middle of his life, when he was about 30, 35, he found himself in a dark forest and he had lost his way. Is this an actual forest? This is totally an actual forest. It's a place with trees and like bushes and like creepy noises. But of course, it's also a metaphysical place. This is depression. Maybe depression is the wrong term because it takes with it clinical terms. Let's call it despair. Let's call it extreme sadness. Let's call it loss of hope. Whatever. He is down. Dante is like feels himself lost. He has lost the way. He doesn't know what he is around for anymore. And I think like many of us can relate to that. That's a basic human feeling. If you are more than 15, you have probably already experienced that quite a lot of times, that feeling of being lost. Why is that so? That is mostly because he has lost his beloved, uh, the woman of his dreams, really the woman he loved, Beatrice, who died some years before, like um, many years before actually, before the beginning of the narrative in the Divine Comedy and Dante was never able to consume this love because Beatrice never really loved him back, mostly because Dante never really told Beatrice. And trying and think for last one straight minute to that, that's really terrible. That's not something you find an easy solution to. The woman of your dreams is dead and you, she never really knew you loved her so much. That's like abysmally terrible. And that is so terrible. The forest Dante is in, these woods are so terrible and dreadful that death is very little in comparison. I mean, Dante is here telling you that death would have been just a minor annoyance to add to all these problems. That's why I talked about depression. Dante doesn't care about living or dying anymore. And yet he found something in this forest and because he needs to talk to you about the good things that he found in this forest eventually, he will have to talk about all the rest. E per parlar del ben che vi trovai, dirò delle altre cose che vos scorte. In those two lines I've just talked to you about, there is the whole of literature, really. To talk about the beautiful things that come out of all this suffering, of all this terrible, terrible despair, he will have to tell you about all the rest, about all the horrible stuff, about all the horror. That's the like the whole journey of literature, why we read books who, which may be difficult, which may be daunting, which may be disturbing, what do we get back from them? That's the whole point behind why many of us read and many of us write books. But there's something more about the power of books in the Divine Comedy and that's the figure of Virgil. And if you read the Divine Comedy like I do, like a piece of narrative, Virgil will maybe be your favorite character because he is going to be, he, he is the guide that guides Dante throughout hell and throughout purgatory. And Virgil is, of course, the author of the Enid, one of the classics, the great classics in Latin literature. And back when Dante was writing the Divine Comedy, like Homer, like wasn't a major author. People didn't know the whole of the Odyssey, and I think only many parts of the Iliad. Anyway, Enid, uh, Virgil, sorry, Virgil was the big one, was the great author, the great writer in history. So Dante is wandering through these woods and what does he find? If not three motherfuckingly huge and terrifying beasts like a lion, a wolf and whatever else. And he is chased by these creatures, he can't escape the woods, but eventually he is saved by Virgil who descends from heaven and fuckingly tells him Dante you're going to come with me motherfucker I'm going to show you the light and he is like oh my god what the fuck is this there's a ghost talking to me the book is that awesome really anyway why Virgil that's the best part why Virgil because Virgil was the most important author in literature and was an inspiration for Dante what you have here is a guy who trying to get over the pain of losing the woman of his dreams, the woman he loved, wrote this huge, huge epic poem which is so complex and so beautifully carved and he is guided throughout hell and purgatory and paradise by, the, by his favorite writer, really, 
This again is the power of books. Through the help of this writer and of literature in general, Dante was able to overcome his pain, was able to understand that other people had felt the same pain, that these are human feelings, that's the way the world works, and he goes on and he went on to write this beautiful like masterpiece of literature and the Dante in the Divine Comedy in the book, he traveled through all this suffering, he visited hell, every single circle of hell, he encountered countless person, he keeps fainting because of course he keeps seeing horrible stuff, like really terri terrible stuff, and he keeps hearing about great people who had such sad life and it's not their fault if they're in hell but they're condemned to be in hell forever and it's so sympathetic with these people which like these being the middle ages it's not something like so you should take for granted at all and he goes through all this suffering and he's always guided by books by virgil that's the great power of classics that's why i think everybody should read the great classics they show you that people who lived centuries ago felt the same you did they show you that there is a way of expressing what you feel even though you hadn't thought of it yet and some dead guy like from eight centuries ago had thought that actually the, the, that's the power of it all about the divine comedy itself it's so complicated and so huge that i'm sure you know a lot about it and yet trust me you know very little about it i have studied it like for one whole year and I know just a fraction of it. Moreover, what we usually read is the Inferno because it's the simplest and most accessible part and also the most interesting because of all the demons, but the Purgatory and the Paradise are just as commendable and as good. Anyway, uh, this is just one quick introduction. My idea was to make you wish you could read the Divine Comedy. If you did that, find an annotated edition, a, tr a good translation in your language, and plunge in. If you want me to talk more about these books, I will do specific videos on certain topics. Let me know in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments about the whole stuff I've said. Let me know what you think about this idea of this kind of mini-series. I will say something like suggest me books to put in this series, but I won't because I've started writing my uh, like postgraduate dissertation and so I already have a pretty pretty long reading list for the next next like eight months so if you suggest you should definitely read Moby Dick I won't I realistically won't in the immediate future thank you so much for watching guys that was awesome I will see you in the next one bye guys <laughs>